Hey you, welcome to Wasted Audio. Today we're going to have a look at Dear Imgui and how you can give your heavy bass audio plugins real graphical user interface. If you haven't watched our video on the distro plugin framework and creating audio plugins, you should definitely check out this video first. Dear Imgui is a bloat-free graphical user interface library for C++ that can be embedded into other software. It has been used in all kinds of programs, ranging from game engines, to profilers, to audio spreadsheets, and even our own wasted audio plugins are using it. We recently enabled support for exporting GUIs from the Plug Data Compiler toolchain. So let's start creating a plugin that has a real user interface. So here you can see the patch for our wasted mangler distortion plugin. And we see that we have a number of parameters. Most of them have the standard minimum, maximum, and default value that gives you a float. And then a couple of parameters have either an integer input or even a Boolean input. And these will translate to different UI objects that will behave differently. So let's go to the compile menu. And here we can now see that next to the regular binary, we can also export a binary plus a GUI, a regular source code and source code plus the GUI. So for now, we'll choose the GUI code and I'm going to export the JAX standalone for easy testing. And we have a GUI. So here we can now see our very, very standard UI that looks like your typical Dear ImGUI software. So we have our bit crusher that increments in integer values. We have the folder, which is using floats. We have the gain and mix and all our different parameters. And here we can see the boolean limiter that turns into a switch. So this already gives us some nice graphical controls and we can resize this UI if we want to, but it's very static and it's missing some nice uh, user interfaces. So let's look at a bit more advanced option for exporting the code. So normally when we export our plugin using the compile window, we have all these extra options. Now these options are then bundled into a JSON file, which is given to the heavy compiler. But we can also manually configure this JSON file when we get some more advanced options. So here we see the JSON that's used for, the, for compiling the Wasted Mangler plugin. And we see that there's many options that we normally don't see inside of Plug Data. Of course, we have our normal plugin formats. We have the name and, uh, and our MIDI configuration. But then we see some other options like this enumerator, and we can define a specific size for the UI. And then there's some more advanced options like dependencies for compiling the, the toolchain. And you can set very specific information for the plugin formats. And all of these are currently not available in the plug data UI, but they might come in the future when we figure out a good way to integrate them. So one really neat option here is the enumerator, which will create a UI object for one of the parameters in this case, the sequence parameter, which is the sequence of effects in the Wasted Mangler plugin. Because the way the plugin works is we have a bit crusher, a wave folder, and an overdrive, and we can change the order or the sequence of these different effects. So inside the patch, this is set using an integer, but we can also create a nice dropdown or other UI elements for selecting these different effects. So let's take a look at how to do this from the command line. So here I have a terminal with the project. I'm going to manually run the heavy compiler on our Wasted Mangler plugin. So we need to give it a few options. And if we do minus H, we'll see all of the options that are available. In this case, we'll use the DPF generator. We'll use the JSON meta file so that we have all these extra options. Um, We'll need to add some search paths because we're making use of heavy lib and other external libraries. So we need to set this. So 
we give it a name, we have the copyright, and now we need to set an output directory. So I'll just use the regular Wasted Mangler directory. And now it exported our code. Now let's compile it. And I'll use Carla for quickly running a VST plugin. And here we now see the plugin has the size that was set inside of the JSON file. We actually, well, we can only resize it in one direction. So we see some of the same UI elements as before, like the toggle and the integer and float objects. But now we see for the sequence, we get this little dropdown, which is a bit nicer way to actually choose a specific sequence because we can actually see what they mean instead of just having a number. But of course, this is still kind of a generic user interface and we may want to have something even more customized for our needs. And this is even a more advanced option. For that, we'll actually need to write some C++ code. So for the Wasted Audio plugins, I typically do this using an overwrite of the standard C++ file. So when we look at our compiled plugin code, we have the generated UI code where we have all our different parameters and there's all kinds of UI objects that are all done using either like an integer slider or a floating slider or we have our combination box with the sequences. But instead, I created a customized version of this using my own code where we still have the same parameters. So they're still connecting to the same DSP code, except instead of some sliders, I've created some customized code that really changes the UI. Now, if you want to really look at this code, you can go to our GitHub. For now, let's see what happens when we change out the UI code for this new file. I'm going to copy the override code and I'll copy it into, into the plugin source. Now we can build the plugin again and it's very fast because it's only the UI code that's being compiled. And now we see our customized code, which uses knobs instead of sliders. It has some different colors, of course, because you want to make it a bit more unique. And then we get this selection box that's very different from a dropdown. And it also switches around the placement of the different knobs depending on the sequence. So there you go. So this is how you create a custom UI for your plugins. I hope this was useful for you to get started creating custom user interfaces for your plugins using the Heavy Compiler. Let us know in the comments what kind of projects you have in mind and which subjects you want us to cover in the future. If you like this kind of content, I hope you consider subscribing. If you want to support the channel and our efforts with the Heavy Compiler, you can buy our plugins that were created using this setup, or you can become a GitHub sponsor or a Patreon member. Shout out to everyone who's already supporting us so far. All right, see you soon and take care.